Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Today we're speaking to Corbin, who is a fantastic chef and representative for Blackstone that are coming across and going to be a huge deal in the UK. But of course, across the rest of the globe, I'm sure you guys are already aware of it. And also this summer, you'll find them uh, in various different independent barbecue stores representing and showing you how you can cook on a flat top. But Corbin will speak about that now. So without much further ado, here's Corbin. Hello, Corbin. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, for our listeners um, who might not know who you are, please do introduce yourself. Hey, uh, happy to be here. Um, I'm Corbin. Uh, I've worked for Blackstone Griddles for the past three years now. Um, I've been really diving into the culture of outdoor cooking. I've been a chef for 10 years before that. And so I really got to dive into cooking outdoors and kind of the family aspect of it. And so it's kind of become my life <laughs> and which which could which could be a bad thing but for this product it's been great because in restaurants and a lot of people talk about like you know like oh my favorite steak is from this place nine times out of ten it's cooked on a flat top in the back and so to have that in your backyard is the immediate like advantage <laughs> and so that's kind of what i'm kind of out here in europe doing i was sent out um to kind of spread that message um and really get people excited about an amazing product that a lot of these people haven't really heard about. Um, they're seeing it on social media, but they haven't really gotten the opportunity to check it out. And so that's kind of what I'm I'm here helping out with, you know. And I suppose that expertise that you have and the passion yeah. that you have for outdoor cooking as well must yeah. have started from somewhere. So how did you originally get into outdoor cooking? So growing up, my family would go camping a ton. And my dad was at home. He was a, a great chef. So my mom and my dad were both great chefs. And they would always kind of get me in the kitchen and teach me stuff. And when it came to camping, they always thought it was so fun to try and make gourmet meals on a fire or mm -hmm. on like a throwaway barbecue and stuff like that. But when it came to that, that wasn't something that I could really help with because it was open flame and fire and stuff like that. And so for years, I was like, oh, I want to do it, but I can't, you know, because <laughs> I wasn't allowed. And so it just built up this like need for it. And so once I, you know, moved out and kind of started my own life, I was camping nonstop and grilling. And like I would have I was going to school and I would have class the next day and I would still go out and cook and see if I could make Philly cheesesteaks in the middle of the forest, you know. And so it was just like. It kind of like carried that down for my parents and they were a huge inspiration for that too. kind of lit that fire inside of me. And yeah, that's, that's kind of where like that love comes from because it's not just like a passion for the food or anything. It's, it's kind of keeping a legacy. Right. Mm -hmm. And how did that translate across into a professional kitchen, but then back outdoors into a career? Yeah. So um, into a professional kitchen, it was actually nice because I had, that creativity aspect of oh this is something that people don't usually do on this type of cooking surface but i can make it work because i've learned to be you know versatile in that sense and be able to cook i'd say like i, I one time i made a piece of bread like i literally made a loaf of bread using a steel box and a fire pit and <laughs> and stuff like that is being able to kind of like think on your toes and that was really helpful in a professional kitchen because there was often times where they'd be out of certain ingredients when there's a dish that is the main dish for the night and it's been advertised for three days. So people are lined up outside to have this dish, but there's certain things that you can't really do. And so you're replacing ingredients. You're, you're honestly changing the entire dish, but keeping it in the same theme in a sense. And so kind of helping with that was like a huge deal because there wasn't really a lot of people that had that training. When I, when I was cooking with people, they were more, classically trained in a sense like culinary school and stuff like that and so which is great nice skills and all that is awesome but creativity can't really be taught mm -hmm. uh you know and so it's yeah it's kind of one of those things where it was nice to be able to you know create dishes and create fusions and stuff like that and so that definitely helped with that and i i'd say i'd say from 
from going from the the um kitchens and professional kitchens to going back to outdoor cooking it was like going from the kitchens to outdoor cooking was i was eye-opening for me because as i said i was cooking on griddles you know i was i was was, my main stations were flat top and so i'd be doing steaks burgers all this stuff on a flat top and it kind of weirdly created this internal battle against grills (laughs) <laughs> because I like had this like theory. I mean, it's 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 true. But like when it, say you have a steak with with grill marks on it, right? That's great. And it looks awesome. But that's only strips of sear, right? You mm-hmm. want the whole thing to have that crispy edge. And yeah. so like that's why I, in cooking in professional kitchens, I was like, yeah, this is the best way to do it. Like cooking outside is cool because it's convenient. But like, I wish this would be a thing. But like, you know, that just may never happen. And then boom, like, <laughs> like <laughs> went, went, went to college in Utah and found this company that's based in logan utah that's like probably 10 minutes away from the university and it was the product of my dreams (laughs) (laughs) and so it just really transferred over and being able to kind of like help with that and be able to show people that you can make these restaurant quality dishes in your backyard was something that was like an immediate selling point and so i felt utilized which was great Mm -hmm. and obviously you mentioned um obviously you've come over from the US and you're you're kind of now here in Europe um, mm-hmm. we were just briefly talking before we started mm-hmm. that you're here to spread the love of Blackstone and, and yeah. obviously kind of get the brand as well recognized in Europe uh, yeah. as the US um, have you noticed a kind of difference in terms of the market in oh, Europe absolutely. And, and the UK specifically in the way that we cook and the way that we use outdoor grills and, and griddles yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's like to a certain extent, it's it's night and day because in the U.S., people are really like their goal is to not even have an indoor kitchen at this point. Um, They want to do everything outside. And when I came here, people, they separate it, right? They say, oh, smoking and barbecues. That's like, cool. I'll I'll have my brisket out there and then I'll be inside doing my Brussels sprouts in my oven and my I'll be like sauteing my onions on the stove. And so bring the brisket in we'll have a full meal with these separate things and they're complimentary right which is true but having everything outside and having that at your disposal is something that like once i kind of tell people about it here they're like oh yeah like well i don't even need a kitchen if i have something like this and it's even influenced people to find value in the grills that they already have or the smokers that they already have because they'll be you know they'll be doing smoked brussels sprouts versus just doing them in their oven and like just talking to people about that and opening their mind to that idea of an outdoor kitchen is it's slowly trickling into this market this new beast that i'm starting to tackle um and it's slowly tricking trickling into it but i'm helping kind of propel that you know and it feels really good to be able to open people's eyes and give them that new found sense of creativity and oh wow what else could i do like seeing people like scramble and like wow okay and so yeah that's that's kind of great because i had that experience when we first when i first started working at blackstone but two years after that it was kind of just maintaining people loving the product but out here i get to kind of see that spark ignite again which is such a win for me that and the company because people like people hear about a blackstone and they're like okay so it's just basically a george foreman propane powered I'm like, kind of, yes, (laughs) but it's also like a cast iron skillet. And so, and when you say stuff like cast iron skillet, people think about everything you cook in a cast iron skillet and it's, it's a whole different level of quality of food. And so that kind of brings in that idea of like, wow, well then I can do a four course meal all outside. And we have units coming that are going to have air fryer drawers in the bottom. And so that kind of brings, I saw that. I heard about that. that. Yeah. That's going to bring the entire kitchen outside right because like i've done i've done burgers on the griddle chips in the air fryer i've done stir fry on the griddle egg rolls in the air fryer and it's it's a whole different ballgame you can even do desserts like i've made bread pudding in the air fryer and it's and it's an oven but it's quicker and that's what i love air fryers about and so you have that and a griddle in one machine people are their minds are blown (laughs) and so like i said seeing that spark is is great and having that experience of kind of bringing people and kind of getting the Blackstone under their nose for them to smell it <laughs> is something that I have experience in. So, so just, just on the air, air fryer part, does, yeah. does that mean that um, 
obviously where the the, the normal flat stone the sorry the normal flat top is gas does that mm -hmm. mean they'll you will also have to plug in the, yeah so just the uh, thing the, the so, so the yeah. yeah the heating aspect of the um the uh, air fryer itself will be propane powered wow. but just just for the fan is is the power mm. oh okay what's nice is like if i've taken the air fryer unit camping because we have them available in the u.s now and you don't need the fan it's just a little oven at that point so if you take it camping you don't have power it's still propane powered and it's hot and so yeah. i've cooked little dinner rolls in there and stuff like that which is great and so it's not a huge necessity but the air fryer creates that convenience oh i think you make a very interesting point about how the uk views barbecuing differently and mm -hmm. the more you speak to more people uh, again I, I don't know if it's the same across europe but definitely in the uk the people who are really passionate about barbecuing feel like they have to have seven eight nine different types of barbecues yeah. and grills to be able to do what yeah. they want to do owen's a prime example with his seven um i currently only have the two but i'm looking at getting a third which you can probably guess the type i'm looking at <laughs> yeah. but, but but what what's being introduced and talked about here offers a very different type of versatility yeah. that we're not classically used to seeing in the uk yeah and a lot of people actually kind of see that as like a well if it does all that stuff then i have to get rid of the beautiful collection i've created you know what i mean which no, is no, no, really no, no, no. Hard. <laughs> exactly exactly that's what i say back and i'm like no you don't you're just adding another thing to your repertoire you're just adding another like outdoor cooking station to your trophy case at that point point. and you know i mean it's complementary to all these different products and so like it's not a it's not really necessarily the i mean you can have the the and aspect like like say you have a grill you have a a smoker and you want a blackstone that's the and aspect but there's also the or in which you don't really have anything cooking outside and you're trying to decide on what you should start with and from the from a, a learner's perspective the blackstone is the most forgiving you know you're not you're not dropping anything down into your grill and burning it you're not leaving four burgers on your grill and walking away for 10 minutes and coming back and they're black you know what i mean they're they're going to be sitting on that griddle and just you know, cooking to perfection. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so being able to tell people that and that it can be complimentary, it kind of gives them that, okay, all right, I don't have to get rid of everything. I can just have this for that perfect sear or steaming veggies or anything like that. Well, I can, I can vouch for that in that I, it's a definitely and. Yep. Uh, yep. So I've got the, I've got the 28 inch with the hood. And oh, nice. um, I picked it up July last year uh, i like it you've asked me as if i am your wife yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yes it was okay. <laughs> yes it was i saw the look over and i was like he's checking with him okay <laughs> yeah yeah i, can't... <laughs> I think what well, i'm gonna kind of lead into a question in a second but i think within our barbecue community within the uk um yeah. obviously you know a, a majority of our listeners there was a there was a kind of real hype that came around Blackstone, certainly in the oh. last year or so. And I, I think I ended up waiting on a waiting list for, I don't know, four, five, six months to yeah. to wait for this that, that to come in stock. Um, so I think it's quite a well-known brand, certainly, yeah. you know, within the avid barbecue community and, and people like myself would happily wait for six months to, to get one. I oh, just sure. wondered kind of in, in your kind of uh, role and, and what you're doing at the moment, are you finding that you're mainly kind of speaking with uh, first time barbecuers or, 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 or I don't want to use the word amateurs, cause, but you, you see what I mean in the you can say newbies, <laughs> newbies. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's the yeah. best. That's the best one. Are you, yeah. or, or, or actually are you spending just as much time talking to kind of, uh, people that are it's a real avid hobby for them they have 10 grill you know grills and etc is it quite a mix or i'd say yeah i'd say it's probably like honestly an even 50 50 because a lot of people that i'm talking to that you know already have the grills and stuff they're already deep in the community and they're already yeah. in this you know they follow all these influencers and stuff like that and they're starting to see a surge of blackstones being flooded into these influencers and stuff and so they're seeing it and of course, they're skeptical because it's a new product. How could you not? You, you, you're loyal to your brand. You love your product. And so they're like, well, what's like, what's the difference? You know, what I mean, like, what am I doing here? And so like being able to kind of talk to them is huge and be able to help them understand that it's, you know, it's a different product. That's awesome. But when it comes to the other 50% of the newbies, 
as you said, as you suggested, (laughs) 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 Um, they um, it's it's really nice because it's like it's like the the world is your oyster type scenario in the sense of like possibilities are endless. They they don't even know if they want to smoke or they don't even know what they want to cook. Right. And so what's nice is being able to talk to those people who you've never really cooked outdoors and you kind of always wanted to is, well, what do you want to cook? You know, and if they they're saying like, well, kind of everything, then like, boy, do I have an answer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so with with with, you know, and they're like burgers and steaks. And I really want the grill because I want that smoke flavor and that direct heat. I'm like, yeah. And that's you know, that's something you can totally get off a grill. And I'm not going to I'm not going to shit on a grill. You know what I mean? Like, hell, yeah, dude, get that fire flavor, get that crisp, get that crunch that you want, you know, yeah. and but like. When it comes to versatility, that's one of the biggest things I tell them is like, what what do you cook during the week? They're like, well, we'll do pasta. We'll do like a carbonara. We'll do fried rice. We'll do fajitas. Um, we'll do fried corn. We'll do. And I'm like, all of those things can be cooked outside. You know what I mean? And they'll, they're just like blown away. They're like, wow, yeah, because it's flat. So it won't fall through. And I'm like, yep. Exactly. And that was something that they were worried about with the outdoor cooking aspect is that Im- intimidation of like, ah, like it's it's smoker. You got to do a lot of research and like you're buying a huge expensive piece of meat, you know, and like but being able to have that kind of calming moment of like, hey, it's going to be OK. This is a forgiving product for newbies is great. And so, yeah, I'd say an even 50 50 really interested in what you just said there so i think i've cooked on the blackstone every single thing that you've just mentioned Mm -hmm. but uh, but you said pasta yeah oh yeah i've i've never never attempted to cook pasta on the blackstone yeah so i mean i how do you do that (laughs) yeah so when i go camping you just you can just bring a pot right and you just put it right on the griddle top because it's similar okay yeah it's an induction stove and so what you do is you get your pasta you throw it down once it's cooked you put it onto the griddle with butter parmesan bits of pancetta you know you're making carbonara you know? <laughs> and you're mixing it around on the griddle and you get that kind of nice like melty cheese sear and stuff like that and so it's yeah it's that's that's something that people often ask too if they're like well what if i need to use a pot or something and like in the states we have units with range tops and those will be coming out here soon but yeah as of right now you could just put it on the griddle top and i do that all the time because it's hot you know what i mean it's going to heat a pan regardless yeah Oh, for a second, I thought you had almost just had some Raw dried pasta. pasta. <laughs> right, some like dried pasta, a cloche with a bit of water underneath, and just sort of. <laughs> that yeah, makes no. way more sense. Yeah, definitely not. That sounds like a mistake. <laughs> um, I think what I find particularly interesting and what excited me about the Blackstone is someone who's been obsessed with food for a long, long time, does food challenges, watches a lot of videos and things. In the UK, you see flat tops much less often, even in kind of kitchens and things. And so for me, seeing it was very exciting, thinking I can have that at home and I can do so much with it. But with the normal people you're speaking to day to day, is there any resistance around that? And does it take much to flip that? Yeah. And so absolutely. People like like, as I mentioned before, people love that that content or that um that direct contact with fire, you know, Mm -hmm. and they love that being able to kind of have that, that taste of smoke and stuff like that. And the best thing I usually tell them is that what you're getting with, with that fire hitting it is a Maillard reaction, right? Is you're getting that crispiness and that's completely and entirely possible on a griddle. And it's, you're way less likely to ruin whatever you're cooking on it because you're not getting that direct fire in which you can't control. Fire is a beast, dude. Like, fat dripping off a burger the fire is going to burn up to it and just create a huge ball of flame you know and so i'll often bring them up to that aspect of like well think about a steak sitting on a grill and all the juice dropping off and falling down and burning versus on a griddle when it sits in that fat and keeps that moisture and kind of it doesn't lose anything like that and i've even (laughs) i've smoked on a griddle like I've, 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 I've taken uh, one of our tin grease cups and put chips in there, you know, lit them, put them and then put, took like a, a cookie sheet and put a chunk of meat on there, like a cooked brisket or something like that. And then you light it and you close the hood and you just kind of leave it and it just creates a little smoke chamber in there. And like, that's something that people are like, 
yeah, I guess you could do that. But like, why would I not just use my smoker? And and that's the best part is that I'll say, I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying you can also have this, mm-hmm. right? And you can have something that one of our one of our biggest mottos in the States is um, you can cook everything on a griddle or on a griddle. You can cook everything on a grill and a thousand things you can't. And so that's one of the biggest like selling points is like people being able to realize like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like I had a guy in the States tell me, oh, wow. So my house never has to smell like bacon again. And that's something that I'll tell these people. And they're like, yeah, see, that's something I could really see. And I I could have that as something to convince my wife, because in the end, let's be honest, that's (laughs) that's like the selling point is convincing the wife Uh, (laughs) and being able to tell people that, like, you can steam veggies on something like this. You can do anything you can do in a simple pan and you can eat healthy on this, you know, and like that's something that people really hop onto. And to be honest, like having them kind of flip from being skeptical to welcoming it is an uphill battle absolutely because it's such a new product you know but when they see it and they like we we did a cooking school um uh, it used to be called the mk shack but now it's called rodeo barbecue in milton Keynes. Mm -hmm. and we did a cooking school there and we had we had a 12 year old we had a 16 year old we had a 75 year old we had people of all different walks of life we had people that have never cooked for themselves in their lives and we had them make breakfast quesadillas smash burgers and steaks and by the end, they were like bringing it up to me, being like, I made this, you know, like <laughs> this is something that I actually put together. And so like seeing that moment of actually using it and or even watching someone use it, like at demos or trade shows or something like that and seeing someone easily make 12 burgers in seven minutes is insane. <laughs> and, and toasting your buns and melting cheese and everything like that. And so I think when I have a visual representation, it's. Oh, it's an immediate sell, you know, Mm. and that's what's nice about kind of being able to turn people towards content and stuff like that, too. Do you cook much with the hood down? Yes. Yes. I so what I use for the hood um, when it's down is all my main two things is melting cheese and steaming veggies or really steaming anything. Anything that I'd like, say I have a chicken breast and I'm in a hurry. Right. I'll put a chicken breast down, squirt a big old circle of water around it and close it. And it steams it. It almost pressure cooks it to a certain extent. And then once you have the internal temperature you want, then you just put it to the other side of the griddle because there's four independent heating stations on a 36. You put it on the right side and you get that nice sear and you can like and you're you're cooking a chicken breast in five to six minutes, which is something that's unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. And so the hood helps a ton. I mean, hoodless units are great because you can buy the basting cover and it kind of does the same thing. Right. Locks in all that steam, melts the cheese and stuff like that. But the hood, oh, uh, that's the unit to go for. <laughs> <laughs> Again, w- weird, weirdly enough, as as a consumer of the product and using it for, like I said to you, nearly a year. Yeah, I actually I haven't cooked with the hood down. Mm. You use a cloche. I've seen you use a cloche. And I've uh, insisted yeah. when I've been over on using a cloche. And like like you said, it's putting the water down and getting the steam. But yeah, yeah and, it changes and I've got things. loads of cloches to to use on the Blackstone. I've got about yeah, three but you or have four a huge one that's already connected. <laughs> I, I feel like I read somewhere that you weren't supposed to cook with the hood down, and therefore just haven't done it. Yeah, I, I mean, why. a lot of people, a lot of people frown against it. Uh, people say that it's like you know, it's not because you know it's connected to a metal handle. You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna if you're gonna put something in there and close it for two hours, don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like it's it's a big chunk of metal that's going to cook. But if you're melting cheese or steaming veggies and you're closing it for three to five minutes, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. you're you're. It's not going to transfer that heat directly. Like, not even close. It's definitely going to do it a lot less than you putting a hand on a flaming so that... grill, right? <laughs> <laughs> for sure, exactly. <laughs> Which we've all done at some point. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. What would you say is the? Uh... Most okay. So, when you're talking and, and going out and doing demos and those things, what is the kind of most surprising meal that you would say to people that they would just never think of in a month of Sundays? What what they could cook on the Blackstone? Yeah, um, I think usually it's like you know what piqued your interest was pasta, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and kind of like fried rice and stuff like that. But I think one of the biggest ones that people realize that like wow, that's a big deal is 
when's the last time you cooked breakfast outside? Mm. You know, like in, in what universe and what unit can you make breakfast outside? Like you can, you can put foil on your grill and hope that it doesn't break and maybe cook an egg on it and make bacon and set your grill on fire, you know, (laughs) but, but if you're, if you have a flat top, like breakfast is now an outdoor meal, which is something that just wasn't really a possibility to a lot of people. And they're like, Oh yeah. Pancakes, eggs, bacon. I can make hash browns. I'm like, exactly. Like, and that's what kind of opens people's mind to that breakfast, lunch, and dinner, anything, anytime, anywhere my mentality. Yeah. So that's what's excited me. That, that That's what's got me thinking because I'm in the process of moving at the moment. And once I move, and I've talked about it a lot on the podcast, I have so much more space in the garden. And so I can <laughs> get more units and things in. But this being able to do all the breakfasts outside every Sunday, my wife does pancakes. That will become an outside thing. Oh, yeah. But yeah. All, also for me, um, I like getting the really thick steaks and yep. I'll do them indirect, but then I want the proper sear, right? Yeah, so absolutely. currently I'm I'm, using, I'm having to use a cast iron pan yep. I, either yep. outside because as you said, some people like the grill bars. I don't. I want an even sear throughout. Yeah, and absolutely. The, black, the Blackstone will give me that. Because right? you know how a steak should be cooked. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah. <laughs> do you love you my food? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, want, I want that screaming instant kind of heat that's going to fully hover that, that yeah. steak or on both sides, yeah. you know? And Absolutely. It's, it's things like that where you can use, in my head, there's plenty you can do on it as its own component because of the versatility. But mm. I think also people may be more excited barbecuers shall we say like Owen and I who like having multiple units doing different things at once yeah. and yeah. I think also if you're cooking for people that's sometimes the show right that's the yeah. fun aspect of oh, it Oh, absolutely it's the main event yeah but it gives you something yeah. different in the arsenal that we don't currently necessarily have here in the UK oh for sure yeah and that's one thing that people are also realizing is like wow this is something that I never even thought of and that's what I love to hear <laughs> Because it kind of opens their mind to not only a new product, but a bunch of new possibilities when it comes to cooking. Yeah, I, I particularly enjoy uh, pancakes, cooking mm-hmm. eggs, bacon, etc. for breakfast and hash browns, or chips, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think they're, they're particularly good for smash burgers. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just because they're, I think, more sturdier than necessarily if you put a half moon on a... Um, a plancher, sorry, on a on a grill, but yeah. um, Dan, you even came around, didn't you, a yeah. few weeks ago, and had a play around with the Blackstone, and I think it's probably the certainly the best uh, smash burgers you've cooked for me, anyway. Yeah, so, so we did we did smash burgers, but what I also did was um, I had some leftover ham from Christmas. Great. So I brought that, put it on there, and just diced it up on there, which oh. had been and it it been boiled and glazed in um coke as well. So, oh, it was, so that sugar kind of yeah, yeah, proper kind of black and sticky, mm-hmm. and just having that on the plancher, cut up and everything, sticking it on, uh, oh, melting yeah. all the cheese over. So so good. Oh you know? yeah, it's a game changer. And stuff like that is like yeah, like when you when you have little bits like that is like, you can kind of just, like you said, create a pile of it and just cover it in cheese, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and I'm all about the leftovers. I think it's Absolutely. something that sometimes isn't utilized enough in, in barbecue, at least in British minds when it comes to barbecue, you know? It's, I mean, it, honestly, it's not even just in British. I think that's a worldwide thing from what I've seen is that a lot of people think, Oh, leftovers, like that's a microwave deal, you know, ah, that's a like, freezer and there's so much you can do with it, you know? Yeah. And they're like, oh, there's an air fryer. That's an air fryer deal or something like that. But like my thing is like, yeah, like you take home a burger from you're cooking outside and you have a you have a an event or something. You have a burger for the next day. You just separate the bun and the burger and you just put it all on the griddle, you know, <laughs> and it yeah. just kind of brings it back. You give it an extra set of sear, you know. Yeah. And one, so- one of the things that actually surprised a lot of people, I uh, this last year, I went to the Smoke and Fire Festival in Ascot. And that was awesome. That was a great time. And um, we had uh, a couple of our helpers that kind of, you know, are in contact with influ- with uh, influencers, um, James and Julian. They're these guys that they're great chefs and they know exactly what they're doing. And they have a really good connection on English ingredients. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't really cooked a lot of English food. You know, when I came to Smoke and Fire, that was my first time in, in the U.K., and so what we ended up doing was doing 
full English breakfast tacos. Oh yes, nice. and now so you're it was, yeah. So it was streaky bacon with a fried egg, um, black sausage all over it, and then it also had beans that we cooked on the griddle that we heated up and almost caramelized and got that kind of sticky aspect that you were talking about and put it in there with those and it was like people were their mind was blown especially with like if we had like crispy potatoes as well and like they're like this this tastes like i'm taking a bite of the entire plate of an english breakfast and i was like i don't even know what that is but you're welcome (laughs) 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 which was great (laughs) Uh, making me me hungry do you know (laughs) how how was it the first time you came over to the uk um, looking at the different kind of flavor profiles and how people cook, particularly in an outdoor cooking festival. What, what, what was that experience like for you? It was it was a lot different, you know, um, in in the U.S., people, they really try hard to, you know, kind of. Be better or different than their competitors, right? And they're trying to create these dishes that they wouldn't think of. And often that's a fault, right? Like there's there's people that are trying to like. They're just putting pieces of pineapple on a grill and serving it. It's like, I know what cooked pineapple tastes like. Like, this isn't showing off your grill. But, like, when I came to the UK, it was amazing, in my opinion. Because you have these people that are all cooking, sometimes even the same cut of steak. But they can specialize it based upon their units to have a different texture, to have a different flavor. And it's that's something that, like, was so amazing to see. Because it's like... It's like a controlled variable in an experiment. You know what I mean? And that's what you want, especially when you're like shopping for grills and griddles and stuff like that. And so for people to like, you know, it was, it was mainly like it was mainly burgers, um, steaks, um, smoking, you know, big roasts and stuff like that. And that was amazing because it's a lot of meat heavy environments, you know, and like in Europe and especially Germany, they're they're going you know, vegan and vegetarian really heavy right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's really great to kind of like have that over there. But in the UK, it was nice for us to be able to, you know, kind of play with the big boys and, you know, show a steak on the griddle cooked in butter and rosemary and have that, you know, different flavor and that completely different aspect of a steak that people haven't really tried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk. So we've been talking about a lot about what you can cook and on on the uh, Blackstone and the versatility. Um, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear whether this is Blackstone related or not. Yeah, uh, other other brands are available. Um, what bar- barbecue fails? One of the things that we hold oh. so dear on the podcast. We'd love oh. to hear some stories yeah. about some of the things that haven't worked so well. So if you've got one, ten, however many stories, let us know. Yeah, of course. Um, so as I said, uh, you know, when I worked in restaurants and stuff and I worked on flat tops, I was like against grills and I was like, ah, I'm not a barbecue guy, but I was like, I'm the type of person where I'm like, I'm not going to shut something out of my life. I'm going to give it a shot. And so I went out and I was, I was cooking on a grill and, um, making I was trying to make breakfast. And as I mentioned before, the whole foil thing, that was from experience, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so i you know i cracked an egg on a piece of foil on a grill and it cooked it, it it cooked great but my thing is i laid the pieces of bacon 
like uh, like the opposite way of the slats of the grill and two pieces fell in and almost caught my whole grill on fire <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was terrified and so from that <laughs> i just accepted that breakfast is not an outdoor activity <laughs> <laughs> which is okay you know that's fine for at the moment at least um <laughs> let's think oh oh my gosh so I was, um, we, back in the U S we were filming content. We were filming, um, one of my TikTok videos and I was making, what was I making? I was making like a, it was like a coconut curry, um, basil, red pepper, chicken stir fry. And I was making it. It was great. But like with coconut milk and curry and, and water and like kind of steaming all that stuff, there's a lot of water runoff and a lot of liquid runoff. And I was, course using our rear grease management system where you scrape it into that back hole there wasn't a grease cup (laughs) (laughs) i forgot to put that on there and so not only was it all over the floor but it was splattered all over the fence behind it and i just (laughs) felt so bad because that was our set you know what i mean like we had cleaned that and gotten it ready for that day and so the whole thing was postponed (laughs) but in the end it worked out you know but Oh, and oh, smoking. Okay. I've had, I've had a really tough time with smoking. I I'm, I'm the type of guy where I'm like, Oh, I don't got to do the research. I'll just dive into it. You know? (laughs) And that's why I was successful with black zones because it's so forgiving, but with smoking that people who smoke me and do it right. I have the utmost respect for them because Holy shit, that's hard. (laughs) (laughs) They not only do you have to be extremely patient, but you really got to pay attention to, salt content in your rubs and and internal temperature of your products and 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 your 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 chunks of meat and stuff like that and i was like you know what i'll just like assume it's like baking all right so this temperature for this long cool i'll do it and so i did it and i had about i think it was like four to five people over and their significant others for dinner and we're we've all, all sitting... been there. We've all oh, been there. <laughs> absolutely. And, and you're stoked because, you know, you're going to perform and you think it's going to go great, right? <laughs> you assume it's all going to go awesome. And you're like, yeah, I'm smoking a pork butt. It's going to be great. And what happens is I, you know, I have the Brussels sprouts. I have, I have the asparagus. I have jalapeno poppers, all that I've smoked and, you know, put out for appetizers and stuff. And everyone's sitting down to eat. And so I finally bring in this huge chunk of meat and it's the outside looks amazing. (laughs) And (laughs) as I say that, you know exactly where this is going. (laughs) And, (laughs) and I, I, you know, I I cut into it and it is, it looks like I freshly bought it. (laughs) It is is a borderline cold and raw. And I just like that immediately taught me like, holy crap, you can't, just dive into something that is like this intense and not do any freaking research. And mm-hmm. my thing is like, after that, when I started smoking, I bought something called like, you know, the meter meter brand. Yeah. 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 Got one of those probes and that saved my life. You know I mean? That with the internal temperature aspect, that was great because, you know, I nailed the rub, but like the skin was great, but only for an inch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so once I was able to get that internal temperature nailed down, it was awesome. But that was probably one of the most embarrassing aspects of my life <laughs> because dude i had like 10 12 people there yeah. and they were all starving and the night ended with mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> it was a really hard time for me <laughs> it's difficult then, isn't it like that particularly when there's people over right you can guarantee something will go wrong if yeah. you've got a few people over particularly if you care about what their opinion on it is going to be right absolutely then it's more is going to go wrong yeah yeah <laughs> um i i just I, I just tend to drink through it <laughs> yeah exactly well i recently caused a mini flamethrower in my garden which i had no idea how to put out that was fun so oh, I love- Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got um one of the rock box uh pizza yeah. ovens. The and, thing, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I'm starting to slowly move away from this idea. Um but for ages. Well no no no, not not so much that. I've got the wood attachment for it yeah. because I was like, yeah. 
my, my other barbecue is all charcoal and wood, so I'm not going to go down the gas route. I'm going to I'm going to do it this way. Absolutely. And I was, yeah. I was just finding that with it, you're having to use really tiny bits of basically kindling. You're constantly putting in there to keep the temperature up. So and I'm like, rotating. right, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pimp this ride, right? So let's move it yeah. out a bit, take <laughs> out the normal attachment. I was like, I'm gonna make a proper fire in nice. this wood wood box, yeah. and it, it's going fine and everything. I was like, oh, I want to put a bit more in there, but I can't get a decent chunk of wood in. So I open the door on the back, which firstly is hotter than the sun, right? I could oh, feel yeah. it through the gloves I was using, <laughs> but then it. it's exactly the same as burping a barbecue, right? What have I uh, done? I've introduced oxygen to it. So the uh, back flies this huge flame against the neighbor's wall of their house, I should add, because are of you serious? Oh, at least you got out of the way. Out. <laughs> and then I'm God. like, I can't close the door because the door's hotter than the sun. And I can't get near it because of this flamethrower. So I had like two minutes of like basically jumping around this thing going, do I throw water on it? No, that doesn't feel right. And I'm going do to I destroy call someone? what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, do I? In the end, I was kind of stood back. And I think I used like a sandal, like a flip-flop. And I was batting the door until it eventually <laughs> crumples back on. I was like, well, that, that, was, that was different and something yeah. that I'm never going to do again. <laughs> That was an experience for sure. <laughs> I mean, it got it got the rock box up to the temperature I wanted and held it for a long time. I mean, yeah, a long great. time. Yeah, no, for sure. Sometimes longer than you want, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I almost killed myself, the neighbours, and <laughs> I was just pleased that my seven-year-old wasn't outside watching me at the same time, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been saving that, Owen. Owen doesn't know this story. I've been saving it specifically <laughs> until when we were going to be on here. Uh, what's funny is, uh, so it's coming to um, Europe, I would say, may, I think June would be the assumed landing date, but it's, so it's a standalone pizza oven on a stand. Um, and so it's about face height. And so it's not really a tabletop unit. It's a, it's a pizza oven that we have mm -hmm. in the States. Okay. That will be coming to Europe in around June. Um, mm -hmm. And it's on a stand it's it, you can take it off and make it a tabletop as well but it's propane powered and it's got one of it so we patented this technology called two stone technology and basically what it is is so there's a top stone but there's also a bottom stone but that's not it so the best part about this product is um like with an uni or a gosni you got to really rotate it and you got to make mm -hmm. sure you're doing it consistently so you keep that good cook on all the sides and quickly our bottom, yeah our bottom stone rotates wow all right that's a game changer yeah and like automatically been, yeah yeah it's, it's battery yeah. powered yeah. Oh, or wow. you can look at it yeah yeah and so it's propane heat with you know a rotating bottom stone and it gets up to heat gets up to about you know six seven hundred degrees fahrenheit in 15 minutes and you are cooking a pizza from raw dough to a perfect pizza in 90 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Which is a game changer, you know, and that and that's the thing is we saw because we we all love pizza, right? How can you not? It's amazing. Yeah. And you want to make it yourself, especially the Napolitano type. And we we have all been, you know, buying unis and and doing it but one of the things we found was like when you have friends over and there's a party and everyone makes their own pizza it's like that's one of the things that falls to the side is like a lot of people have a hard time rotating it and like they're scared to get in there and stuff and so we were like well then let's just do a rotating stone and we were honestly like surprised that no one had really capitalized on that to be honest and so and so what it is is you stop the stone you launch the pizza start the stone and it starts rotating 90 seconds later you have a done pizza and so that kind of hit that area of learning, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's great is, is it's not necessarily canceling out the possibility of an uni or a cosni because once people get to that point where they're like, okay, I got the dough down, I got the sauce down, I got toppings, I know how to make everything else. Now I can move to like, you know, the classic Italian style where you actually do have to rotate it. And that is like, I do appreciate that process sometimes, you know? And like being able to be, you know, in that process and you're, you're constantly working with it. But for that first year, two years, three years of making pizza, you don't want to be burning pizza. You want to, you know, you want to focus on ingredients. You want to focus on dough. And so with that rotating stone, it kind of gives that nice kind of 
ability to mess up, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. And you can kind of have a control variable, which is great. Have you have you ever tried to do a pizza on the the normal Blackstone? I have. Yes, I have. So <laughs> so here we go. Does so it I, does it get does it get the rise? Yes. So what I do is I use a cookie sheet, like a like a like a raised cooking like a cookie cooling sheet and so i'll set that on the griddle and i'll set a pizza on that and then i'll close the hood you know and i'll cook it for about five six minutes and it'll get that rise a little bit and the yeast will activate with the sugars and then you remove the the um the cookie tray and you drop it right down on the griddle so it gets that sear on the bottom of the dough and you just use like a basting cover or you use some sort of cover to put it over it and then it kind of you know it melts the toppings it kind of internally cooks that that dough and it's definitely yeah. a possibility and that was something we were doing for a while and that's kind of what brought us that spark to kind of like well if people are so stoked about cooking a pizza on a blackstone let's give them a pizza oven you know mm-hmm. and we actually have these units that um so they don't rotate but they are for the 17 and the 22 inch griddle and so what you do is you take off the griddle top and you put this attachment onto that, onto your griddle base using that direct heat of the unit you already have. Yeah. And it's got a front door that you close and it's a rotating one. Like you, you, it's not rotating, but you rotate it yourself in that sense. Yeah. And so you go in, you rotate the pizza, you, you kind of, you know, make a pizza from scratch. But the best part is, is that it's, there's no power. It's a hundred percent propane. And so you can take that wherever you go. And there are influencers in the States that we have that, literally focus on just using that specific oven when they're camping in Yosemite or all these different beautiful national parks around the world and showing that you can make a pizza like that is crazy, you know? And so being able to have that versatility between a rotating one and people also want, you know, to switch to that vibe of being able to be involved. We have that for them, which is great. I think uh, now's probably a good opportunity since we're talking about pizza and ingredients and and things to uh, bring up our barbecue bingo challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm just going to, I'll share my screen. Uh, Yeah. Oh, wow. Barbecue bingo. So we have a list of different ingredients, uh, some of which were picked by us originally, but now in the last kind of series or two, we've been asking our guests who come in to leave an ingredient for people so what we do is we spin this and whatever it lands on we'd love to know what would you do with it how would you cook it and uh, will you will you cook it um as well but you'll be able to see if that's come up nicely on your screen that we have lots of different types of ingredients some of them are nice where people have gone you know what i want to look after the people that um, are coming on as guests others are very very left field like tripe for example or kangaroo Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but we also have something on there called my signature dish. So if it lands on that, it, you need to cook the thing that you're best known for, um, either whether it be friends or whether it be on something you've done on TikTok. What would be your? Signature I already know dish? exactly what I would do for that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what would it be? What would it be? So one of the biggest things that we do in the states is called bacon fried corn. And so what you do is you take a bag of frozen sweet corn, right, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. You take bacon, you take coriander, you take um, cumin, you take really anything that kind of creates like a, you know, like a Mexican flavor. You can do jalapenos if you're okay with spice. Um, And what you do is you, you take the like streaky bacon specifically, not more of like whole chunked bacon, but streaky bacon. And you're going to chop it up into little chunks and you're going to throw that onto the griddle, cook that up. So it's little crispy bits, like similar to like pancetta or what you'd find in carbonara. And once that's all cooked up, you throw the entire bag of frozen corn onto the griddle. And not only does it cook and get crispy, but it cooks in that bacon fat. Mm. And it kind of gets that bacon flavor and crispy outside and like, you know, soft inside of the corn. And then once you have that mixture of those flavors, then you add your, your diced coriander. And it gets that really fresh flavor of like that, like deep michoacan mexican flavor um and you sometimes you can add minced onion or diced onion and those will cook up get that flavor and you get um the cumin so you kind of get that salsa hot sauce aspect and have you have you guys ever heard of elote no no i haven't it's like a mexican street corn right 
And so it's like a, it's like a whole cob of corn that they, you know, they, they sear and grill and then they, they add, you know, they add like some sort of like tallow or some sort of grease to it. <laughs> and then they add cilantro, they add Parmesan or cotija cheese, which is like a Mexican Parmesan and mm -hmm. with like cumin and all these spices. And so basically what we did is we took that and we put it onto the griddle with cut up corn. And so it's served in a bowl or as a dip. Like you could dip chips in it and stuff. And so that is something that people are like, I'm not going to cook corn on my griddle. And then they try it and they're like, I'm going to cook corn on my griddle. <laughs> it, it sounds like a great side dish. It's not something I've ever heard of before. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And when I was in, um, when I was, you know, doing a lot of the TikTok content in the States, um, Every video we would post, whether it was me cooking it, whether it was at a trade show and one of our um, chefs, Todd Tobin, that's he actually invented it. Um, we whenever he would cook it, we would film a video and post it. And those videos would always do 500K plus in views every time, because it's one of those things that's like, what corn bacon? What is this dude doing? <laughs> and then at the end, they see the final result and they're like, holy crap. <laughs> like, yeah, I want to right that's now. Amazing. Yeah. Um, is right. there anything... well let's give it a spin well, i almost i almost want you to get that now <laughs> beforehand is there anything on there that you're allergic to <laughs> oh, we yeah. always ask people because we had peanuts on there once and someone was allergic to peanuts so that was a i problem. like how i like how i like i went in to look i have no allergies i no. <laughs> <laughs> i was like let me check i'm like what am i doing <laughs> you look and then you go goat i'm allergic to goat so get that oh, get that off there nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah <laughs> All right, let's give it a spin then. Sounds good. I know what I really want it to fall on. It's not going to, though. What is oily fish? Can you explain that for me? <laughs> like a fish with a high fat and oil content? Yeah, so yeah. like mackerel, for example, would oh, be like easy. an oily fish. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> And so if I were to do mackerel on the griddle, you know, I'd I'd season it similar to I would a steak, right? I'd make a rub. I'd, you know, get it on there on both sides of the filet. Mm -hmm. And with the high oil content in it, you're like almost shallow frying the meat, right? And so you're getting this crispy edge because as it sits and what I would do is I would I would turn on my griddle and put it on immediately. Because mm -hmm. what it does is when it's not to that hot content and it slowly rises with that heat, it lets those oils kind of come out. And then yeah. once it's at that heat, it's sitting there frying in its own oils and keeping that taste and keeping that flavor. Mm -hmm. And so I would, yeah, I would, I would, I would probably do, yeah, if it came to like, if I was doing mackerel, I would probably, I would go tacos, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um because if you're going to get that crispy edge, I would, yeah, I would, I would coat them in taco seasoning or cumin, black pepper, garlic, salt, maybe even minced coriander. Um, and then drop it on that griddle, do that process, get it crispy on both sides, take it off, slice it into strips or chunks and put it on a corn tortilla that I had, you know, kind of warming up on the griddle with pico de gallo, cabbage. Maybe make an avocado lime cream sauce and put that on there with some fresh tomato, fresh coriander, and that meat. And that's fish tacos, baby. Like that's <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is like what I love about speaking to someone from a different continent, right? Because in the UK, I think we're very guilty with things like tacos that we have one mind about what it is and how you cook it. I never would have thought about doing like using oily fish in that way to put into yeah. tacos. Do you think that's fair, Owen? Yeah, I mean, I just wouldn't cook fish at all, but that's just me. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's because you're an awful human being, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like fish. <laughs> <laughs> On top of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay, so what what, uh, what ingredient would you like to leave uh, oh, on the list? That's, that's hard. Because I'm a pretty petty guy. Someone left me with the oily fish. I'm going to clap back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, let's think. And this is specifically for barbecues and outdoor cooking, right? 
I mean, it, yeah. it could be for anything, though, because one of the things yeah. that Owen and I try and champion is the fact you can cook anything outdoors, right? Great, right. yeah, yeah. Oof, okay, I would say... Squid. Nice. Squid. Ooh. Because with an un like an uncontrollable heat source like a grill or like something like that, like it's really easy to turn squid into rubber, you know. Mm -hmm. Or get people doing a squidding pasta, right? Yeah, yeah, squidding pasta would be crazy. I see. <laughs> get, get, get your raw, get your raw pasta, put it on the blackstone, no, just... <laughs> burn it, throw it away, <laughs> pull out a pot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what what what's um for for twenty as we kind of you know we're already in March yeah which is mad for you know how quick the year's going already but it's insane I remember last March like that's how crazy it is <laughs> yeah exactly um although you know we have listeners across across the globe uh, predominantly we have you know mainly UK listeners but um what can we expect coming into europe and into the uk i think you've obviously mentioned about the pizza stone and, and the air yeah. fryer but is there is yeah. there anything else that's worth you're allowed to shout about or, or talk to us about let's give us a you know yeah an kind of keeping an eye out for yeah yeah um so i mean there's there's the the units themselves and the you know the the accessories that we have coming like we have i mean we have amazing accessory kits whether it's cast iron dishes to make deep dish pizza in the pizza oven and stuff like that. But one of the things that we really excel on in the States is our own curated seasonings and sauces. And we are planning on bringing those over here and kind of, you know, creating new recipes and stuff like that. And we have a complete list. Like we probably have, I'd say two to 300 recipes on our U S website. And so kind of bringing those over with those sauces and implementing that We'll give people like entire monthly meal plans, you know, and we have we have um we have something that we're trying to implement now that'll get people really excited um, in the States called four for 20. Um, it was invented by one of my best friends. He's one of the chefs back home um, and his name's Matt. And he created this idea of let's feed four people for $20 mm -hmm. and four people for $20 is something that a lot of people are like bullshit you know <laughs> like you know what i mean and so what he does is he not only creates a list on because one of our like one of our biggest retailers in the states is walmart and so he'll create a list on kind of exactly the ingredients on walmart.com and be able to take that list and put it connected to the recipe so people can click it and it builds the cart and then you can just go pick it up and it's a guaranteed price and it's an amazing thing. And so that's something that we're going to be bringing to Europe. And, and I think we're going to be starting with the UK especially. And so having this list of curated recipes that are $20 is something that is going to bring a lot of value to the product in itself. I'd awesome. say that's yeah. exciting in my opinion, because people love saving money. Oh, God, yeah. The Brits do, and, and... but that's what we're about, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone does, man. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else that that you that we haven't necessarily discussed around Blackstone griddles or, or barbecue and in general just cooking that that you'd like to kind of talk about that we haven't discussed? Yeah. I mean, kind of just like I mean, I know we might have lightly touched on it, but kind of reiterating the aspect of kind of like the family idea of being outside. Like mm -hmm. think about everyone sitting at a table outside for a barbecue and the dad is sitting there on the grill and he's stressed all to hell. The sweat's falling in the burgers. You know, it's just, it's a hard time, but with the Blackstone, like, I feel like it's one of those things where people love to watch. And it might be that internal connection between a flat top and hibachi grills, you know, <laughs> and people just love to see it happen. But, and that might even come from it being such a new product. But even in the U.S., people still gather around and love to, like, be a part of the situation, be a part of, like, helping cook and getting stuff done. And like, oh, you want to you want to lay this steak down? It's really easy. And then, boom, like they're hooked. You know what I mean? And so it's like it's that family aspect of kind of being able to have your entire family outside committed to something that not only they're going to enjoy but feel that they're a part of right 
And so that's, I think that's one of the biggest things is at least with our culture that we like to push is that if you have a big family and you want them to be connected, especially with cooking and stuff, it's really hard in a kitchen, you know, with like a range top and stuff like that, because there's the term too many cooks in the kitchen, right? But there's no mm-hmm. term too many cooks in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and so kind of having that is something that we really like to pride ourselves on because Blackstone's like, I hate to be a Hallmark card, but Blackstones bring families together. Like it's, it's a fact like we've seen it so many times, time, time and again. And again, is that like, we've seen people that, Oh, like my wife hates cooking, but now like her and I are like, you know, nerding out about what we should cook Friday night. You know what I mean? And so it's like, it's creating those bonds and that is something that you really can't trade, you know? That's, that's inter- interestingly uh, on, on that point, um, as someone that has lots of real smokers, etc., as well as a Blackstone, yeah, uh, and and then obviously been doing it for quite some time. Um, we've, me and Dan, have regularly spoke about on this podcast that you know we are almost sometimes our wives get a bit sick of it, you know, just yeah. how much we barbecue, what we talk about, etc. Absolutely, I've yeah. been I've been trying for a long time to get my wife to use my Traeger or use my Weber or use, you know, whether it's the kettle or the Smoky Mountain or my Uni, whatever. Yeah. yeah. She, I met, she was more interested in trying the Blackstone <laughs> and actually has, I've come home from work and she's been using it. Yeah. Uh, and she hasn't done that with any other grill at all. That it's I've exactly got. that. And, it, and it's quite interesting. Aspect- yeah, it's that aspect of bringing people together, but also it being so, like, welcoming and, like, not really intimidating, especially when you see someone cooking on it and you're like, well, let me try that. And you're like, holy crap, this is so easy. And it's, like, really hard to mess stuff up on there. You know what I mean? Like, especially as a newbie, the word that you brought to this conversation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I was saying am- amateurs, but, yeah, I appreciate, <laughs> I, I appreciate the sentiment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, with the I mean with with the uh the amateurs uh <laughs> they, <laughs> they it's it's just so much more forgiving and yeah. like say you like forget about a burger on a on a griddle, like it's fine, it's sitting there in its own fat, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's not really gonna like burn to a crisp, you know, yeah. when it's surrounded by fire because of that fat and stuff like that. And so like I feel like, yeah, that that aspect of bringing people in with the moment of I'm not scared, technically, because it's not really something that you really have to do a lot of research on. Because once people look at it as a cast iron skill, they're like, oh, I've used that for years. And so you just think of it, think of it as a big, ra- big cast iron skillet with corners, you know, and then it kind of translates that to people and it kind of gives them that moment of being able to kind of take it in as something that they see themselves actually being able to try and dive into without being embarrassed. You know what I mean? And like being worried about failing and stuff like that. Something that I really liked and I hadn't really considered is doing some uh, Googling and some YouTubing earlier. I came across your grilling adventures, Um, you know, something quite, I had not considered the Blackstone as something that you could take away like that. And in the UK, particularly in the last year, there's been more and more products that have been coming up out, which are about being grills that you could take around with you. I mean, yeah. Owen's got one. Um, and the fact that you can just put, particularly one of the smaller Blackstones in a boot yep. and take it with you. And it's exactly the same yep. as what you've got at home and you can use it anywhere. And the way that you use it as well in, in that first episode with the fact that you're cutting up those potatoes and you're steaming them on there, um, yeah. you're pretending to make sauce, um, <laughs> <Bernays. Come on. laughs> um, but, but the fact that, you, you know, you, you cook dinner on it, um, you cook breakfast on it. You also cook smash burgers on it and the grill doesn't move. There's no stress whatsoever. And it offers something slightly different as well that I wouldn't have considered a Blackstone for, you know? Oh, absolutely. And like, that was one of our biggest things with the idea of griddle adventures was kind of being able to show people that like, oh, you're an adventurous person. Like that doesn't mean that you have to stop at 
rest stops or fast food to eat whenever you're on the go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're an RV person, if you're on the road a lot, like something like this is something that would really not only cut down on, you know, bills and stuff and price of everything, but really give you that sense of cooking for yourself on the go, you know, and like, and that versatility of bringing it wherever you are, like, I'll bring mine to the beach or something like that, or I'll bring it up to the mountains when I go skiing. And it's just like being able to have, like you said, that exact same product, no matter where you are, is something that a lot of people like step back and they're like, wow, that is actually a huge deal. And as, as like, you know, me being new to Denmark and and in that whole area, it was great because I truly was adventuring there. I was seeing places that I had never seen before, but I got to keep the comfortability that I have of cooking on a Blackstone. Right. And so, and so it was so nice to be able to kind of just plop up shop, you know, and like Mm -hmm. the best part with the Griddle Adventures series was that when people were walking by as we were cooking and stuff we were you want one like <laughs> you want one? <laughs> yeah and they're like hell yeah what like you're in a parking lot cooking smash burgers that i would pay 12 dollars for mm-hmm. and so that was like something that was like great and then you know and they immediately asked what the product is it's propane how is that working out here like this is something that i would make like expect in a backyard like that's what i love to hear because that's what I immediately thought. And I want people to like, I want everyone to feel that exact same feeling. So for anyone that isn't aware of Blackstone, that's that listens to the podcast, where can they find out more? Um, So we have a Blackstone products.eu site for um, we have it for info on the, on the units and stuff like that. But we, we don't, um, if you're in the UK, especially, we don't really, um, we don't sell online because we like to push to our specialty retailers. And so we have a good list of specialty retailers that we'll be putting on a landing page over the next week. Um, and it'll be a, a connection of that blackstoneproducts.eu page. It'll be a UK specific area. And what it'll be is it'll be a map little thing that you can put in your address and it'll show you the closest retailer that you can go to. And they and we've been going since I, I got here in the UK on the 23rd and we've been going around and kind of talking to people and giving people these selling points and giving people like what makes this product better than others. And so you go to a retailer that has a Blackstone, I guarantee that they will have everything they need to answer your questions. Right. And what about socials? What about, so you mentioned TikTok a few times. So, uh, so what about our, socials to see your cooks? Yeah. So our US page is great. Um, we are Blackstone, Blackstone products is the Instagram handle and um, Blackstone griddles is the TikTok handle. Um, we are working on a Blackstone, Blackstone Europe Instagram page that we have live right now that we're posting content to um, trying to grow that as much as we can, but we're posting recipes posting you know call outs about units and stuff like that and then we're also working on a blackstone uk page that we have right now but we're you know trying to build it with influencers and stuff like that because we're so new to this market but there's definitely a lot of information for people to take from those and that 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 one is blackstone products underscore uk so um yeah it's been great speaking to you is there any last messages that you want to give anyone out there get excited <laughs> 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 that's great thank you so much for taking yeah, the time to speak time, to us um because you must be knackered on this whistle stop tour of the uk so we really <laughs> appreciate it <laughs> of course yeah i really appreciate you guys having me out and being able to kind of like you know translate that culture over and kind of let you guys know what we're all about and what we're trying to you know accomplish here that's great thanks so much yeah nice yeah. to meet you thanks for your time yeah. cheers That's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast. It was great to talk more about the Blackstone griddles, um, what's coming up with Blackstone and obviously Corbin's experience. Um, I think you can really get the passion from everything that he was saying. Um, As ever, we'd love to hear more from you. So please do get in contact through our social media channels at Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast. I appreciate that we haven't been as regular as we used to be. We are in the process of sorting out another season and we will be back frequently, but hopefully this episode would give you a nice little um, something to listen to until we get a, a new season underway. Until next time, keep on grilling.
Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.